to talk about prevention a little bit. Um, you know, we all know about uh, smoking, but uh, obesity has recently um, been tied much more to cancer than it, it has been in the past. Um, I think uh, not alone in this room and wondering at what level of being overweight is one's cancer risk skyrocket. No, uh, we don't. Uh, one of our researchers published in the New England Journal of Medicine two or three years ago, one of the more uh, talked about in the media, studies about the relationship between obesity and cancer, but there's no denying that there is a relationship. Where that triggering point is, we don't know. However, we do know that there are a lot of things you can do, even if your BMI, your, 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 your body mass index is higher than it should be, uh, if you can watch what you eat and exercise, you can change your risk. Getting cancer, so so uh, the key point here is that when we published the official report uh, about uh, six or seven years ago, we had the evidence that at least 60 percent of all cancer is preventable during a normal human lifespan. And remember, believe that 60 percent of 1.4 million cases of a hell of a lot of disease can be prevented. Bob Weinberg, who's an American Cancer Research Professor at MIT, just published in Newsweek a week or two ago that he believes it's now 70 percent. I believe. Hopefully, before my career is over, it'll be 80 or 90 percent can be prevented. So the key point is, and, and I just it was just announced that for the first time since we've been keeping records, less than 20 percent of the American public uh, smoke. It's now 1947, but to get below 20 when at the time of the Surgeon General's report it was it was a majority of all men in America. That's huge progress, and we've proven, of course, that it works. That you can quit and reduce your risk of cancer. So there's a lot people can do. We've actually partnered with the American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association. We compete every day in the community for volunteers and money and, 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 uh, and attention. But we said, look, there are certain messages we can get out there. And basically, they're don't smoke, or if you do quit, and we're willing to help you. You'll see your, see your doctor as appropriate for age, appropriate screening test. You know, get some exercise and eat right. You know, how many people can honestly say they can't do any of those things? Not very many. You don't have to win a marathon, but get moving. Let me. We're following 1.2 million people through their whole life. The biggest prospective epidemiolo epidemiologic trial in the history of public health. In that study, and it's we've had subjects in Colorado and subjects in Atlanta. In that study, a male who doesn't smoke and gets some exercise, as self-reported, has an 8% absolute chance of dying in midlife from any cancer. Eight chances in 100 of dying between ages 35 and 69. Not just of cancer, just dying. His couch potato smoking counterpart, 39% chance. Wow. 39%. Amazing. Yeah. So, so it'd be hard to exaggerate the importance of prevention and health promotion. Um, uh, let's talk about vitamins, because I think a lot of people in this room are curious about that. And I know that you're very cautious about endorsing anything. Uh, there's been some interesting research on vitamin D in particular. I know these things kind of go in waves. They can be faddish, but you think we might be approaching a point where uh, 1,000 units of vitamin D is something that is proven you think doesn't hurt you? Well, you know, that, of course, that gets into the whole issue of uh, FDA, and that is, of course, efficacy and, and safety. Uh, and there, as you know, are things such as hypervitaminosis, so you can very uh, recommend something that somebody can have more. I'll say this. I'll be surprised. Uh, the way I would answer this, which is waffling, I suppose, a little bit, is that uh, we have never, no, there's no evidence that, that, that there's anything better than a good sound diet. And, and if you have a good sound diet, and if you look at your teeth, you've got all kinds of teeth in there, not just teeth to, to chew, but teeth to cut through. If you have a good balanced diet, then you're very likely to get the nutrients, the micronutrients that you really need. If, though, a vitamin like D, or another example is aspirin, which is not a vitamin, obviously, but in our study, the study I just referenced, uh, we know that uh, men and women who take as little as one baby aspirin every other day, both men and women, 40%, 40% lower colon cancer mortality rate. No, I don't, don't think the American public really knows that. No, I think we've not done as good a job as we should of getting that information out. And, and people tell me, you know, well, I read that, I read this one week, but then I read something opposite the next week, and so there's that confusion. And that's another reason we're trying to work together through through collaborations like Sea Change to say, can we get a, a single message? And former President Bush and Barbara Bush have both done PSAs now to say, 
here's some things. And, and, and President Bush says, it, he says, now you know, now you can. And some pretty simple messages about how to change your life and, and reduce your risk of dying prematurely of cancer. 